Massively multiplayer online games, one of the greatest genres ever created. Hundreds of games, thousands of hours, and millions of players. The online gaming world is busier now than it's ever been before, and the range of games available means no matter what kind of adventure you want to have, you will be able to find it. But these games aren't without their flaws, so in this series, let's examine the seven deadly sins of MMO design. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Strife Hayes. I've been playing and analysing MMO games on YouTube for several years now, and over that time I've come to notice some constants in the development cycle, small things that even big games can do, which really damages the overall experience. So let's analyse the fifth sin of MMO gaming. Wrath. Or forced interaction including forced player versus player. Before we begin, please consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel and ringing the little notification bell so you don't miss a single future video. A massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. Right, let's begin. Wrath. A very simple sin is extreme anger. Make someone mad and incur their wrath. You've probably had a nasty teacher at school you could describe as wrathful, or a boss who would bring their wrath down on low-level employees just to flex their power. Wrath is one human being showing anger or malice toward another. It's a sin that requires two people. One to be the wrath giver and one to be the receiver. So how would wrath tie into the MMO design space? For the the sin of wrath to happen, one person must be showing extreme anger toward another. This means you must have a minimum of two people in the same place at the same time. Now if both of these people actually want to be in that place for the same reason, then the chance of one of them becoming angry to the point of wrath is actually rather unlikely. If two players want to do something, they likely both enjoy it. They've chosen the activity or adventure because they find it fun. But what about if one of these players actively doesn't want to be there? What if one of the players hates the specific gameplay elements they're involved with and is angry about being there? Well then that player is likely to feel bitter about the whole situation and will take their anger out on other players around them. This means wrath within the MMO world happens when you force players to interact with others when they don't want to, or you force them to play the type of content they don't actively enjoy. So for me, wrath is incurred whenever the following choices are made. Forced interaction with another player, either for a skill or group content. Forcing PvE players to compete in PvP, or the opposite, forcing PvP players to compete in PvE. So let's examine these three areas. Let's start with forced interaction. MMO games are, by their very acronym, massively multiplayer. There are lots of people within them, and because of this you have the opportunity to interact with lots of people. You can talk or trade or fight or exist within this world the way you want to. Now most players will take this opportunity to interact with other people. They find friends and form clans or guilds and adventure together, but not everyone wants to do this. The amount of people wanting to play an MMO game solo has increased vastly in recent years, and games have adapted to meet this increase. While a lot of people do say to me, if you want to play solo, just go and play a single player game, the reasons for wanting to play an MMO solo are much more subtle than just adventuring alone. It can be nice to know you aren't alone. It can be beautiful to be able to sit back in a town or a city and watch people come and go, knowing there's a human behind every one of them. It can be an enjoyable experience to be alone while surrounded by people without directly interacting with any of them. It's nice to get that rare drop and wear it around town and know that people are looking at you, but you also don't need to talk to them. Sometimes it's nice to play an MMO solo because it makes the world you're existing in feel more alive and more organic, even if you have no desire to actually talk to any of the people. Just like how some people enjoy living in cities or towns without talking to anyone else. It's an environment they enjoy existing in. But some developers look at this and think, no, this world has interaction, so you must interact, and they add in quests or story dungeons or skilling tasks that require someone else to help you. If you want to complete this objective, you must interact with someone else. The most obvious example is the Shield of Arav quest in Old School RuneScape, requiring two people to join opposing gangs and steal half a shield each from their gang's hideout, then bring them to the king for you both to finish the quest. Adding in content that requires you to team up with another person adds in one major problem. 
If the person you team up with doesn't play the game in the exact same way as you, it won't be a fun experience. If you play hyper efficiently and read all the guides and watch all the tutorials and know the mechanics inside out and want to finish fast, that's fine, but you best hope to find someone else who plays the same, otherwise your gameplay experience is about to be slowed down. And if you're the opposite, a player who enjoys going slowly, reading dialogue and experiencing the story, then you best hope to find someone else like that, and you both play slowly, otherwise you might end up being paired with a super fast speedrunner who yells at you to hurry the hell up. Forced interaction is an interesting idea, but as we've learned from years of design advances, interesting does not always mean fun. Forcing a player to interact with another player sounds great from a designer's perspective, but the reality of it is, unless both players who team up are wanting to experience the game in the same way, you are forcing a group of players who don't want to share experience to have one. You are removing the autonomy of players to choose how they approach a situation by including another human who might not make choices that they are happy with. I know many people who complained about the story dungeons in Final Fantasy XIV or the Elder Scrolls Online, not because the dungeons were bad, but because they were suddenly forced to play with other people who didn't match their own play style. With people either rushing through the dungeon and screaming to the others to catch up, taking way too long exploring every single aspect of the room, or instantly quitting the moment they saw the group wasn't full of metagame classes and builds. You only need to look at Neverwinter forums or subreddit to see floods of the same question. Why are people speedrunning the dungeon and leaving me behind? Why do higher level players power through this forced group content and leave me walking? and bored through rooms of already dead enemies. It's because Neverwinter forces endgame players and leveling players to share the same daily dungeons. The endgame players hate this because it's too easy, and the new players hate it because it's boring and they have nothing to do. Along with the frustration that comes from working with unpredictable people, you have the added frustration of waiting in a queue for a group to be formed. Nothing will annoy a solo player more than telling them their progress is now halted and entirely at the mercy of other players. Waiting for a group to form when you do not want to do group content at all but being required to in order to progress the game is just adding insult to injury. Remember, group content in MMOs isn't bad. I've often said that I believe MMOs themselves are less good games and more facilitators for social interaction, so having group content in your MMO isn't a bad idea, but having forced group content is. This is also why many MMOs are adding in solo bosses or duo bosses, because they know it's far easier to do something yourself or find one person you like playing with to team up with. Oh, also that Shield of Arav quest? They've changed that in RuneScape 3. You can now do it solo. But group content isn't the worst, it's only a short quest and you can move past it. The next design choice is the absolute pinnacle of wrath-inducing gameplay mechanics. Forcing players who want to do PvE to do some PvP, or vice versa. PvE stands for Player vs Environment and means the human player behind the keyboard takes on the puzzles and challenges within the game that were designed by the game's developers. If you enjoy killing the NPC enemies within the game, finishing the quests, or taking down the boss monsters, then you are a PvE player. In the PvE player's world, the only human input comes from them or their teammates and the enemy is entirely computer controlled. If you're a fan of PvP, that's player versus player, you will enjoy taking on the challenge that can be supplied by another player, another human actively trying to outsmart you. In this situation, the only mechanical element from the game is the actual gameplay interface and the combat system, the input from you and the output from your opponent is both fully human. You aren't trying to beat the design, you're trying to beat a person. In some games, the best items for PvE players are obtained by getting involved in PvP matches, or the best PvP items are only dropped by PvE bosses. Some games have quests or achievements locked behind completing tasks within the PvP or PvE environments, or worse, some games have dedicated PvP areas that 
force PvE players to go into them for one reason or another. RuneScape has the Northern Wilderness that's fully PvP, but also filled with PvE enemies and the locations of many, many clue scrolls. Neverwinter has the Icewind Dale expansion that locked the best PvE armor behind completing a PvP minigame. And the Elder Scrolls Online hides a vast amount of sky shards within the central landmass of Cyrodiil, which is also the open PvP zone. Now, I'm not saying PvE or PvP is better. They are different, and it's their differences that make players attracted to them for different reasons and annoy players when you force them to mix. So let's examine this. In a PvE situation, that's player versus environment, the player, or team of players, are the only human elements in the equation. You are in control of your armor or weapon setup, your skill build, your attacks or abilities, and when you or your team go to fight the enemy, that enemy is predictable to a degree. They're still dangerous but they're a known quantity. The allure of PvE gameplay is of learning, understanding, and then beating a closed system. Your gameplay is based off the fact that you have advanced knowledge of what the enemy will or is very likely to do within a limited area. The enemy is often confined to a location like a boss room or a wandering area. They have a limited selection of possible attacks or certain environmental abilities they can use, such as flooding the arena or making mobs appear. The thrill of taking down a large boss monster is achieved because the designers have given this enemy a powerful but limited skill set and your victory requires you to understand this skill set and to play around it. PvE battles play out less like reactive combat and more like a violent dance. You know the moves you have to perform, you know the reactions you have to take, and you win by showing your mastery of them. In a PvE fight, the players know the enemy's actions are set to either a specific rotation or a set of reactionary rules that can be manipulated to win. For example, the tank using an aggro pulling ability is manipulating the enemy systems to attack them, and that is an essential tool for the player players within their toolbox of defeating a boss. Player versus environment fans enjoy knowing they worked together to take down the program. The boss is just a set of instructions and through memorization, reacting to known events and correct use of your own abilities, you can learn the fight and master the process of winning, and this mastery of the process is fun. PvE players often enjoy learning the steps to the dance and enjoy seeing constant, measurable progress they can master the encounter. Now, PvP is almost opposites in terms of moment-to-moment -moment encounter gameplay, because in a PvP battle, both combatants are human players. They aren't constrained by the limits of a planned system. A player does not have a set roaming area. They can travel wherever they like within the game bounds. A player does not have a specific armor or weapon setup they are always confined to. They can equip any combination they want. And a player, unlike a boss monster, does not have a set rotation or a learnable pattern. Fighting another player is not a case of learning the system and reacting to what you know will happen. It's now a case of proactively trying to cause a reaction and then adapting to the outcome, either positive or negative. You cannot force another player to react in a certain way. You cannot use a tank's attack me ability because the player doesn't have to obey it. You can only apply pressure hoping to cause a reaction and see if that player does. Many players enjoy PvP for this exact element, the random the undefined chance that things may not go your way, and the eventual knowledge that victory against a human opponent is not simply beating a set of planned moves, it's beating human inputs through speed and skill. You win in PvP not because you know what to do, but because you knew what to do better than your opponent. PvP fights also never play out with any set formula or rotation. When you fight a player, you don't know what abilities or style they will use, so your opening moves, unlike a PvE situation, cannot be set or refined. You can attack in the way you feel is best, but you can never have a guarantee that your opponent isn't expecting that and has prepared the perfect counter. PvP fights are human input versus human input, and are free of most constraints or limitations, the opposite of a PvE battle. We can now see that PvE players enjoy PvE fights because of the predictable nature of designed enemies, the teamwork required to win, or the enjoyment of learning a routine and then showing mastery of that routine, like the steps to a dance or the lines to a play. Memorization and correct execution lead to victory every time. Your victory is entirely 
your responsibility. While PvP players value the freedom and chaos that comes with allowing another human's choices into the mix, your attacks and abilities are not guaranteed, you have no definite confirmation of what's coming next, and victory isn't assured. You win or lose based on not only your inputs, but on those of your opponent, and victory is never 100% your responsibility. Because in PvP, it's not about you doing everything right, it's also essential your opponent does something wrong. Whether that be setting the wrong armour and weapon before the battle even began, to using the wrong opening attack, or forcing you into the wrong reaction. PvP battles contain more adaptive choices, with chances of failure, whereas PvP contains more reactive with guaranteed chances of success. In PvE, you can say, event A is happening, therefore I must do B. Your choice in the moment will not affect the enemy's planned rotation. In PvP, you need to say, it's likely A will happen, so I must choose what to respond with to influence the rest of the fight. Players enjoy both styles for different reasons. If you force a PvE player, someone who enjoys memorizing systems and predictable gameplay to engage in PvP, you're forcing them to experience a side of combat they do not like, because it's too chaotic or too random for them. If you enjoy the process of learning a system and defeating it through set inputs, you will not enjoy being thrown into a chaotic environment and told you have to win through a combination of skill and chance. And if you force a PvP player to go boss hunting, you're forcing them to experience predictable, learnable combat instead of the open-ended system they've been enjoying. The very reason a PvP player enjoys PvP is because they enjoy the thrill of knowing the enemy is another smart, capable human, and this makes the victory so much sweeter. The knowledge that you've not only won, but you outplayed someone else in real time. Placing either of these players into the aspect they don't like will make them annoyed, and annoyed players are more likely to take to the forums and complain, or lash out at fellow players starting the cycle of annoyance. The reason the Northern Wilderness in RuneScape, Icewind Dale in Neverwinter, or Cyrodiil in the Elder Scrolls causes annoyance is because there are many reasons for both PvP and PvE players to go into those areas, and when those two types of players meet, neither of them is getting the gameplay experience they want. The player expecting player versus environment content will be annoyed they'll likely be killed through an unpredictable, unlearnable input that they cannot react to, and the PvP player has an unfulfilling fight because their opponent wasn't ever intending to try and fight back or win. They were there for different reasons. They wanted to have different experiences. Which leads us back round to Wrath the sin of extreme anger. And in the MMO world, wrath is created by forcing players to interact with others when they don't want to, or forcing fans of one style of combat gameplay to experience the other, even if they don't want to. If you as a designer put both PvE and PvP in your game, then simply let the players choose what they wish to partake in. One, the other, or both. But do not force them to experience everything, because forcing them into the other will never be fun for anyone. Thank you for watching. Another huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. If you're enjoying the series, you can support the Patreon from only £1 a month, or come chat to me live on Twitch, or join the Discord. Links are all in the description below. Cheers for your time, and as always, have a great day.